Research has found that children and young people are losing their connection with nature. Schools have a vital role to play in reconnecting young people. Groundwork is a regeneration charity that works with communities, schools and businesses to improve the quality of people's lives. And this all started a few years ago. When I got an email forwarded from the deputy head about a project called Wild at Heart. Go, go, go. The Wild at Heart project works for special schools across Cheshire to increase people's access to green spaces and get young people, children and young people to explore and discover more about the outdoors. Wow. Me and David are just going to take the footballs out of the nets. Okay, David. Can you remember, Adam, why we need to take them out of the nets? Ah, remember? Why did you take them out of the nets? Drop down. Because we don't want the birds to get the feet caught, do we? Groundwork can lead or support a wide range of learning opportunities from one-off sessions to residential trips in, in the national park. These sessions can then be combined to go towards pupils receiving um, a recognised national award. The RSPB award involves pupils completing six different activities for their bronze award, 12 activities for their silver and 18 for their gold award. The John Muir award requires a minimum time commitment from four days to achieve the Discovery Award, eight days to the Explorer, and 20 days to the Conservative Award. I got sight! We decided that it would be really nice to put together a wildlife sensory garden where um, some of our um, less able wheelchair users love the sensory experience of being outdoors. Um, so that was a double points activity for one, um, for one of the um, helping us to get our silver last year. Well, the school's been involved in the project probably about, this is our second year. We had one group who trialled it and that was successful. And then Jill's taken this on and found it very exciting, both professionally and personally. So we've got youngsters who've done it at bronze level, uh, some doing it silver, and this year we hope to go for some youngsters who'll go to gold. My kids now, because I've been coming over with them, they they know how to feed the birds on their own while we're doing it, get the bird feeder out, and it's a total sense of independence. They'll do it themselves. And they're, they're each different as you bring them over. You know, you, you've got uh, one pupil who will sit there and sort of just, just enjoy being in his spot. And then we'll feed the birds when you sort of ask him. And you've got a couple of others who just, you know, love doing it all on their own, getting their stuff out of the chalet. And I've got, you know, an, another couple who just en enjoy it on a di different level, you know, sort of sitting there and s talking about what they can see and what they can hear in the garden. What bird is it? Roger. Good girl. And you can even do like a classroom, um, a virtual place within your classroom with the technology you've got nowadays, and that's fabulous. But the, you know, it's a real, sensory experience to be doing um, the, the real thing in outdoors. And for a lot of our young people it's having the ability to be independent and to be able to do things, real things, by themselves, for themselves and have a natural interest. Andy, I pick out eyes Are you okay? Shall we take it out? Yes. Yeah. Oh, please. No, you might have my pocket. It's going to be cold. Are you going to put it in your pocket? No, 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 that's it, that's it, yeah. You yeah. could do cool things with those. Hello. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you know no. what we could do? What? I know. We could drill a hole. We oh. could drill in it and we could hang it off a tree. Yeah, do it. Do it. Andy, do it. 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 Do
thing. Yeah. Or you can hang around your neck as a big medallion. No, you need their whole... No, do that. Come on, I don't know whether this will work. I've never tried to do that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I, I, we've got a little bit of string. We can hang that off a tree and it yeah. spin around and oh, the wind will look really pretty. Beautiful. Yeah. Teamwork. Wow. Big oh, we can just hold it. Did you just all get in a line without being asked? You just got yourselves in a line all on your own? We were approached by Andy via email and then our head teacher, one deputy head teacher came out to certain classes um, and asked us whether we'd like to participate in doing the RSPB awards. After initial contact with the school, I will go into a school and meet up with the lead teacher and we'll discuss how the project can fit in with what the school's already doing. Um, basically, I then come into the school and deliver all the sessions that the pupils need to do to achieve their awards and arrange all the activities and write all the risk assessments and do everything that's necessary for those activities. I love Marbury. Do you? I love Marbury. It's a great place. I never said that. And do you know what we're going to do at Marbury? Can you yeah. remember? Uh, we're going to do three things. Yeah. Okay. We are going to go and see if we can see any birds from the bird hide. Watch oh. the birds on the bird feeders. And I've brought my very, very, very expensive special binoculars, oh, so we can have a special listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone, everyone, you're everyone can have a go. Person. Oh yeah, I proved you're not. Yeah. Each and every one of the children is individual. Um, their level um, of behaviour and support is different. Um, some children require more support than others to understand what was happening or to gain control of the behaviour or remain in control of the behaviour. The basis really of most of the projects that Andy's delivered to the children have been very, very child-centred, child-focused, um, learnt through play and very kinesthetic, hands-on, which is what the children need. basis of learning is through play um, and so for the children to be in a different environment um, that not all children get to go in the countryside. Some children living in inner cities, they've never ever been, so the learning through play rather than just sitting in a classroom looking at a whiteboard was just fantastic. Um, it was really, really, it is exactly what they needed. It's a um, oh, yeah. early little bit of fox yeah. and has birds what we're gonna do? and has a, 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 a pony, I mean lake, with Guys, dogs. Guys, listen and go. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go and go go yeah. have a look and see if we can see any of the birds that are feeding off the feeders and then we're gonna look on some of these pictures I've got and see if we can work out what birds they are. Okay? The spontaneous language that the children offered was lovely. Um, very excited about seeing wildlife just roaming around the place when they found something. It was, oh, come and look, come and see, which is really unusual for our, t our children. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a dipping state. I'm a cat. What? 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 What's the ring? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the knot hatch. They're on the on the lips. That was a knot hatch. I just came on peanuts then. You can normally get it often it goes upside down. Yeah. 
there's one in particular child that does spring to mind that doesn't really like to relay an awful lot of information that he actually does at school or anything back home. It's school is school, home is home, and there's not a lot of information gets relayed, um, even though mum does prompt to ask. And I know mum wrote absolutely over the moon that they'd actually gone home and talked about what they'd seen, what they'd done. Um, so that was like a really big success story for us. We've got one little boy that's sort of not integrating into class very well at the moment, so we're hoping he is coming in more and more and more into class. And we're hoping that sort of within the year we've got him fully in class, but at the moment he's having quite a lot of one-to-one -one time out of class. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look and see if we can find any mini beast on the next log. What we're going to do, we're going to have a look for some mini beasts, and if we want to catch them, this is how we're going to catch them. We're going to catch them using plastic spoons and a cup. Because we don't want to squash any of them, do we? We want to be really, really careful that we're really, really gentle with them. Do anything, guys. If we move a log, and there's an animal underneath it, what do you think the log is to the animal? A home. It's its home, okay? So if we're going to move anything, we've got to be really, really careful that we put it back exactly how we found it. Otherwise, it would be like some huge, big giant coming around to your house in the middle of the night and taking the roof off and chucking it down the street and going, I'm not putting that back, why should I care? So. The project's been extremely successful for the fact that we've been able to link it curricular-wise um, in various different ways, science and habitats from one of the houses that, like the book house that the children built outside in the playground, even though only one or two classes were involved, the whole school is benefiting from it. We've come back um, from things that we've seen and we've researched on the internet, we've done persuasive letters um, from it with the children, science lessons, humanities and ICT lessons, doing animal fact files. And what you want to do is gently move it, turn it over, look, look, look. You don't want to get, hey look, there's wood lice. There's lots of wood lice and there's a little worm there and there's a slug there. There's a slug, I like slugs. Put your love back when you when you smooth. Look, look, look at that tiny little worm I got. You can just make it out move. Oh, he's tiny. I got that little worm then. Did you see him? Oh, no. No, Obviously, with, with the constraints of national curriculum, you, you can't just say, oh, yeah, well, we'll do that today. You know, you've got, you've got all your planning and everything. So once you work out where, where it fits, um, it's, yeah, it's great. So th this year, I teach um, eco on a Thursday afternoon opposite the deputy head who teaches horticulture in the morning. So that's a really nice split. <laughs> We're going to make a bat box. How? How? Good question. We start off with these two bits. What we're going to do, yeah, we've got all these different bits of wood here, and we're going to hammer them together. Uh -huh. And when we hammer them, if we put them in the right places, when we hammer them, we'll end up with one of these. Our kids do love having someone new come in. Um, and James remembers Andy from when we went on our residential and you know his face lights up um, and Adam who um, does find it difficult sometimes to recall people's names will say when's Andy coming in you know and just you know they, they do remember him even though he doesn't come in you know very regularly and you know, enjoy working with someone different. We do, we need some more nails. Okay, so you've got to be really careful that you don't drop off, okay? You guys have just made the very bad box. Let's check, does it look like that? Yes? Wow. It's lovely to see the children outside of the, of the school setting, to see that some of the things that we do put in place, learning their independent skills, coming through on a residential. And these were the dens you made. Mm, yeah, Marbury. 
What do you think about going outside? Do you like being going yeah. outside? Do you like staying in class all the time? Or is it good to go out sometimes? I like uh, kind of like going outside but and thing is like it's good but it doesn't give you enough um, exercise. It doesn't do isn't it? Let's see if there's another picture of it. Hey look, no. it's a wood lamp. It is a wood lamp. Check you. Um, what are we doing? Uh, can you remember what that was? What did we do when we did that? Thingy. What did you do to make those? Can you remember? Leaf stamping. Yeah, what did you use to stamp them? Can you remember? Did you use little Rips. stones? Or like to stamp, stamp, stamp. Was that your fault? Yeah. I really, really like doing that. Okay, so you're going to hold the glass and it's going to go like All the way around, you want to get the whole leaf. And then when you think you've done it enough, you open it up and you've got a picture of the leaf that's just out of the juices from the inside of the leaf. And sometimes at least five of the six boys absolutely love nature, they love wildlife, so that was like amazing for them to do. Just going out into sort of like the environment, the countryside and, and using things like that that they'd never think you could colour with or so that was like really it was like oh cool this is ace this is that they could actually do and see see it like it's like cause and effect really they could see that there was something at the end of what they were doing. <laughs> The project is all about taking people to wild spaces that they might not have experienced before and these can be just in the school grounds, we've done, we've done a lot of work in school grounds, um, we've gone to local parks and then we go further afield to national parks so that people get to see the kind of the different stages of wild spaces. And I'm about to take um, three people from Adelaide School themselves. There are three different awards for the John Muir. Um, we're still at the early stages, um, so we're just going for the first one at the moment. We, well, I say that as well because I've been involved, um, we've discovered uh, loads of wild areas in ways that we would never imagine, like mountain biking, kayaking, canoeing, just walking and orienteering. So it's enabled pupils that may come from sort of less privileged backgrounds to be able to go outside and explore the wild and be in places that they wouldn't necessarily be in. Um, it's enabled them to perform outdoor adventurous tasks that they would be otherwise unable to access and achieve uh, without the project in place. Brandon, they'll get some maps and show us where we are. No, yeah, don't, don't give Brandon fantastic. a map. Brandon, give me a map. There's a surprisingly large number of people that go geocaching, and there's a surprisingly large number of geocaches hidden around places that you would just never have known. We got every phone, and like, found out where we were staying. We got, we got told we like going geocaching. People that have been here before have put boxes down in certain places with objects like a book in. People have hidden caches all over the country, all over the world in fact, and they hide these caches um, outside in public spaces and then log the coordinates using GPS units, log it with the geocaching website and then other people can download that information or get it straight onto their mobile phones and then go and look for these caches themselves. Which one are we going to Brandon? Keep pressing Watch pages. out. Keep pressing pages. Yeah. Oh, is he still star fishing? <laughs> <laughs> they get to use um, technology. They get to follow, use navigation basically, use compass directions and work out distances. Um, think about terrain, how they're going to get from one place to another, and and they get the sense of finding the, the cache at the end. Um, Peoples um, are really keen to help each other out, so some people might be more familiar with, with the technology than others, so um, we'll help, of, you know, one, you'll see one people helping other people to find stuff. For members of staff, 
it's a great activity because you can let your pupils run off and we're then thinking that they're going off on their own when actually you know exactly where they're going to be because they're going to be at the geocache and you're going to find them there. Got it. I found it! This residential gives the pupils the opportunity to experience the award in its most fullest natural environment. Um, we've only been to places that are just a few miles away from school but getting really out of school and sort of into the wilderness and the surroundings of what the award is sold on is uh, more of a, an experience for the boys. Anyone Capricorn? No, when is Capricorn? I don't know. What's that like? Is anyone that thingy Capricorn? Is that like a go go, that green thing? What's that green it's thing? a little weird, I don't know, I don't know, what's like like part. You know what's like a, you know the mushroom thing, not the like mushroom thing, like Mario? Oh, yeah, what's yeah, like yeah. one of them, but with a little hat thing on? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a pink highlighter in a football? Thing? The pink highlighter, uh, football thing, and a pretty pink race at that. Oh, that's lovely, that would that suit me perfect. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I can imagine you. And, uh, part of the reason that the pupils go to our school is big on social and emotional development and this project enables them to interact with each other, interact with other people that they may not come across in their day to day lives. They're faced with challenges and situations that they wouldn't necessarily come across and would not be forced into sort of making decisions and having to use leadership skills and qualities like that and managing people um, and because they know they can do it now because they've had to access those skills they can take it back into their everyday lives um, which from my own experiences has transferred dramatically with absolutely brilliant effects so it, it is very very important it, it, it was amazing because I think it was some of our pupils first residential as well so it was just one night overnight and we were lucky with the weather and they were we've got some fabulous photos of some of them you know um, splashing in the river and um, doing ephemeral art out on the moors and you know it was it was a really valuable experience yeah. I'd taken a few groups to the woods and we'd sort of gone in different groups and we sort of looked around and we'd walked took this group we just got in the woods and they just went, wah! They just spread out. Immediately spread out and ran wild, climbing trees. You know when I found my, found my own house? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And you made it, well, they, they found this like gathering, remember? Yeah. Um, well, you, that was my house. And it was, your, it was around there. We, so we, we did build that. a book house too. We did build a book yeah. house. Yeah. And yeah. that's still there, isn't it? That's that the finished it. product. That was that one. Yeah. Can you remember why we built the bug house? Yeah. It wasn't just a house either, was it? What did we call a it? Host, a bug hotel. Yeah, look, wow. we did that, yeah, that find a quiet spot that we did, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do you remember that, Charlotte? That we had to disappear off and find somewhere yeah. that you liked on your own and just stay there for five minutes. Hey, you you like that. Some of the, the sort of stuff we did, like find a quiet spot, is maybe something that we've not asked the kids to do before. They, I think some of that aspect for me was was, was amazing and, and with some of um, the less able youngsters we took them over to the woods um, the, the wheelchair users and where some of the kids we, we sort of lay down in the woods and looked up at trees and got all that sort of feel of it it's a bit more difficult for our wheelchair users to be able to do that so we actually did did it we took carpet tiles over to the woods and and lay them out on on the on, on the carpet tiles, looking up at the trees, which is probably, I would imagine, the first time they've you know ever had that experience. Certainly, as a you know as a teenager, and uh, so that's sort of my some of my personal overwhelming memories. Yeah, you know, I never when we climbed up trees. Yeah. And I got stuck. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got a I never, I never walked, but I got stuck. Yeah. <laughs> You seem to get stuck all lost a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite thing you do, huh? Um, I like all of it. You like all of it? I like all of it. I like all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh, you have to turn this light all together. There you go. Yeah. Well, at least that can be very good. This residential gives the pupils the opportunity to 
experience the award in its m most fullest natural environment. Um, we've only been to places that are just a few miles away from school, but getting really out of school and sort of into the wilderness and the surroundings of what the award is sold on is uh, more of a, an experience for the boys. It's a real, real experience for, the, for them. Really, really far outside of their comfort zone in a really wild place that's quite remote. They're used to towns and cities. Um, they're having to do things for themselves, such as make the bed, go and get their own breakfast, um, responsible for their own hygiene and cleanliness, which is also good. So there are again skills that they can transfer into real life situations, getting them used to when they're going to be living on their own, which for some of them may not be that far away. Our kids being in an EBD school are completely different from that of mainstream, but he understands them, he gets them, he's on their wavelength, he explains things in a way that they find interesting and engaging. We've had enough, can you get off our land please? <laughs> Will you come back? We had a good time. Cheers, Tara. See you then, Jim. Yeah, come back. Nice to meet you. Bye. 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 Ah, see you later. Oh, see you then, Brendan. I don't think I've seen the lads talk more actively about something than when they have come back from doing an activity. The feedback they are giving to the rest of the boys within the school, and the, the feedback in assemblies, the feedback they're giving to other teachers just around the place. Um, members of staff aren't having to initiate and instigate conversations with them because they're willingly speaking to them about their experiences of this project. So that, from our perspective, is massive. It's absolutely huge. The pupils we took on the John Muir will not get those opportunities because they come from quite poor, uh, deprived backgrounds, uh, some of them, uh, care homes perhaps, or, or just family broken homes. Uh, so they actually got opportunities to, to do things and experience a residential, for example. Uh, going away for a night, a lot of them haven't even done that, not even been out of county. So the fact they got to experience that is great, really. Andy has got a little something for those lads. Thank you very much for having me, everyone. Um, I've had a lovely, lovely, lovely time as well doing these awards with you guys. It's been a right laugh um, from first minute to the last. I'm really proud to be able to come to school today to give you all your certificates for your John Muir Award. So, Brandon. Well done. I've learnt from Andy that it's all about experience. Um, not m my experience of things, just the kids and what they experience. They need to have fun, they need to appreciate the outdoors, they need to get covered in mud, get freezing cold, roll around in dirt to truly understand the proper meaning of nature and the way the wildlife works and everything to do with it, because otherwise if they don't have that fun and they don't have those experiences, they will be less willing to share them with their peer groups, their children and their grandchildren in years to come. Well done guys. It's imperative that every child gets the opportunity to do this.